Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And as you can tell, the shop, well, it's the woods. And behind me is that case construction king that editor Dwayne and I found a long time ago. So I know this has just been sitting that it worked and then quit working. And I know absolutely nothing about tractors, but I kind of really want to try to get it running. So if it's making farm equipment work is something you guys kind of want to watch. I'm, I'd love to just come out and tinker with this. And it's not where we had found it. It wasn't a kind of easy to get to and work on spot. And it took me too long to get around to trying to revive this thing and make it run. So it's just been slowly getting shoved further and further away. And we're now kind of in the, the deep woods, just a little bit deep enough so that um, I'm sporting the fancy socks to uh, try and keep the ticks off my legs. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, the Case 580 Super K that I know probably just a little bit more than you about, this was kind of just left as a piece of construction equipment that's been slowly just rotting and getting worse. It kind of worked and then got parked and forgotten about. And we found it while we were doing kind of a tour looking for a new Georgia location. And it was sitting in a prime spot ready to uh, hopefully run again to move some earth because these are very expensive pieces of equipment and it's kind of sad to just see it neglected. So our goal today is to try to make this thing run and work again, which is kind of a big task. Now, my friend, you know, Derek, he goes on 500 mile drives. I don't think we can really do that. So our goal is to dig a hole and move some earth with the Construction King, right? That's I think what it says on the back there, the Case Construction King. Of course, bringing back these forgotten relics of construction equipment wouldn't be possible without help from today's sponsor, Policy Genius. Now with everything getting so incredibly expensive in the world, it has us out in the woods looking for used abandoned construction equipment. One of the easiest ways to fight all these rising costs is reshopping your home and auto policies and Policy Genius makes that incredibly easy. If you're buying a home or car, you've already got a lot to juggle. Let Policy Genius do all the work for you looking for home or auto policies. Why should you use Policy Genius? Well, first, they don't sell your information to third parties. Policy Genius has thousands of five star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped more than 30 million people shop for policies and placed more than $120 million in coverage. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Getting started is incredibly easy. First, head on over to policygenius.com slash wrench and answer a couple quick questions about yourself and your property. Policy Genius will then show you price estimates that fit your needs and help you find the best option. Their team of experts will look for ways to help save you more, especially when you bundle your home and auto policies. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. When they help you find that lower rate, they'll do all the work to switch you over for free. Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. What are you waiting for? Head on over to policygenius.com slash wrench and get your free home and auto insurance quotes. See how much you can save. That is unless you like paying way too much for things, which I don't understand. Just head on over, link in the description below, see how much you can save. Let's talk a little bit more about this piece of equipment. Now it operated for many years with a friend's company where they dug wellhead septic tanks and it even leveled the property for his son's home and then it just fell out of service and has gotten worse since then. What I do know about it is it's a Construction King 580 Super K. I don't know the year, I've not climbed up to look at the plate. We don't know what engine's in it. All I know is it needed a cylinder replaced, I think on one of the stabilizer legs. They got that, put it back in, and it quit working. It didn't start and it just it kind of sat because with busy, companies as crazy as it sounds if a piece of equipment's down a lot of times it makes more sense for them to just buy a replacement go get something either brand new or good used because they can't afford the downtime with the equipment not working so this poor thing has just been sitting so i'm going to uh, grab the camera we're going to take a little bit of a walk around and uh, both really try to figure out what this thing is and what we might need because i've taken little glances this this may be way too optimistic to uh, 
bring back this piece of equipment that's, yeah, it's been a decade. Alrighty, let's uh, take a look at what we've got. Now, last time the bucket was just sitting on the ground, but they couldn't really move it that way, so they have it propped up. We've got the outriggers up and this bucket all up. Thankfully, all four tires do hold air, but there is a slight alarming circumstance going on here. Someone has been into the wires, and I'm not sure what they were after, what they were doing, but we've got a lot of loose stuff that we're gonna kinda have to go through and try to figure out what is going on. Um, oh dear. Uh, that thing got a, a little bit hot there. That is, uh, that really shouldn't look that way. I am, oh my goodness, okay. So I'm guessing that's what these free floating fuses here are. Uh, they don't appear to be blown, but we're gonna have to look into that. One thing we're definitely gonna have to do is get these leaves out and just kind of go through and see what we've got going on. Now, I'm not gonna try and pretend and claim to be a heavy equipment guy. There's some of you that are gonna know more than me, but that's okay. We're gonna make this thing work. Now, one thing you need to make 100% triple, triple, triple check if you're ever gonna work on any type of hydraulic system, excavator, backhoe, anything, and you're gonna have the boom up, it needs to have a mechanical safety. So what this does, it actually has a bolt to keep it in place. When you lift this arm up to service, you unbolt it and let it drop and sit against the ram. And what that's doing is it's physically holding this entire assembly up. If you don't have that, the hydraulics can let go at any point. Kid comes in and grabs that lever and kind of plays with it a little bit. Anything, that's gonna come down and it doesn't care anything about you and uh, you're not gonna have a very good time. So anytime you have hydraulics up, make sure you've got a mechanical safety. Now in the back, this has a little lock foot that I remember reading a little bit about that when this boom comes all the way up, this locks in. Now there should be another pin that's missing that would then drop in this to keep it when it's being transported from swaying back and forth. And if I remember somewhere in there, it's supposed to be the pedal that releases that when you bring this up over center. So, you know, we've got really good condition hydraulic hoses, you know, that's, that's optimal. You know, there's, there's no evidence of hydraulic oil leaking. Not, none at all, that's all good and normal. Uh, on the bucket, we do have nice, sharp digging teeth. This is good for mildly rocky ground. That is gonna break it up and dig well. Uh, what else do we got on it? We've got a lot of fittings that are gonna need some servicing, lights that probably aren't working. Let's look under this hood, because I am curious to see what this is powered by. We'll grab this hood. We're gonna grab this hood. Hi, buddy, can you help? What about you? We'll grab the hood and... Okay, we're getting it. It's nice and light. All right, there we go. Um, I am not a diesel expert, but I am 99.32% positive. That is a Cummins 4BT with a VE pump, not a P pump, a VE industrial pump. So we have mechanical throttle lever here. Hey, that's freed. We've got that turning, that's a good sign. Normal appropriate amount of leaves and things on it. We've got a direct drive cooling fan, which is pretty common. And we've got uh, mold growing on it, which is always good. Uh, these fuel filters don't look terrible. This, I think, is the oil pressure shutoff valve. I don't know. You guys will tell me. But what that means is we should have a single wire fuel pump shut off, which, which I feel a wire. Yep. So under there, 
you can't really see it and I won't be able to show you. It's gonna be our fuel pump shutoff solenoid, which just needs 12 volts on one of these. P pumps are three wires and I have no clue how to wire them. Uh, I do not see, these would have, when it comes to like block heaters, a grid heater. I don't know if that's what this is supposed to be or not, but I thought it would space this up a little bit more. There's a little, is this a primer or a drain? I don't know. There's, why don't you guys comment below and let me know what this little flapper here is that's under this fuel pump. It makes noises. I don't know if I'm doing anything. Anyway, so we've got that. Let's pull our dipstick. Well, would you look at that? It's not water. That's diesel oil. Mm. Oh. Don't do that. I don't know what's going on with the car wizard. On this side, oh. If you notice, here is our exhaust manifold. And um, there's no boosty boy. There's no turbo. It's just a little naturally aspirated one. And what's always good to see in all of your wiring, uh, just loose wires. I'm assuming this is probably our start solenoid wire and it is not connected. And it's been uh, probed quite heavily. Normally you've got to go to Roswell for that level of probing. Um, but we do have our big power wire. We've got our little flapper. If we look back here, that's running over into our leaf pile. So I'm assuming we connect some juice there. Uh, our big grounding strap. One thing I do like about heavy equipment is they have these beautiful braided grounding straps that just, they work amazing at it. They do a really, really good job. Uh-oh, you guys see that? Uh, I'm guessing she was not stored for any length of time for the cover. And uh, can you see in there? It's just dark. That's slap full. Like there's moss, there's critters, there's everything. So I really hope they didn't, you know, get through the muffler and into the engine. We've got, oh, parking brake. Okay, so down means off. okay so we have down and up which ones which is that up means parking brake or I okay so if we pull down that means no parking brake maybe because then if you try to get out it hits your leg and then up is parking brake Maybe, I, I don't know. That, that is one of the most confusing things I've seen before. We've got clam control, which this doesn't have. All of our fancy little controls for this bad boy, which here is left, right, up, down, button, does all of those things. We have got this loose. I believe this is front, back, you know, drive. Oh no, no, it's our transmission. Neutral one, two, three, four. So we've got a four speed. So two, one, that'll be four, oh, three. Okay, so that's encouraging. That all is working. I'm assuming that's clutch disengage. We've got all our gauges. We have throttle, idle speed maybe. Oh yeah, so this is most likely our PTO or you know, reverse idle up for when you turn around to run that bad boy. And then we have a whole lot more controls down there. But, and then here we got forward, back, neutral. So all of our switches appear to be working kind of well. All right, so I think our next step is, let's try to turn this engine just over by hand, see if we've got hope there pull that exhaust off and try to make sure nothing is back through the engine if it turns over and then clean everything up and bypass the broken electrical that is the whole tractor and mess back there and see what happens, right?
All right, so this looks like it has a PTO takeoff on the front of the crank pulley, which means I can't really get a wrench on it. So let's just try, grab the fan. All right, we're slipping a little. Let's go this way. Okay, still slipping. Come on, I know you're a diesel, but. Give me something. You can do it. Wait a second. I can see movement and I hear some movement. Oh, hey, holy moly. She's turning. I don't know how much we'll get turning, but holy, oh, compression. Oh, that is one giant, oh, that's a huge relief. Okay, it's a Cummins. So all we need is fuel, power to that solenoid, and to bump the starter, and we wanna hear this engine go, and then we'll try to fix the rest of it. Alrighty, check it out. We have got a fresh battery. It's crazy what you can find, you know, out in the woods when you carefully put it behind a tree. Uh, we've got a heavy duty post battery. We've got the terminals off. We have it connected, but one thing we did is we disconnected the whole tractor. So it's only got power that goes to the starter and then the ground's connected. The whole rest of the electrical system currently is bypassed because our next step is we're just gonna jump the starter and see if it turns the engine over. If we get it turning the engine over, then we're gonna go through, check hydraulic oils and make sure there's some type of diesel in it. Granted, because this is a Cummins, I mean, they run on anything. I mean, vegetable oil, used oil, ATF, you could probably spit in it and it would probably still work. Oh, but the floorboard's looking a lot cleaner. And while we were cleaning that out, that pin I mentioned was missing from the rear boom. Hey, we found it right there. You see that beautiful thing? So we are making some progress, but, uh, yeah, I think it's time. Let's just come over here. Oh, this is the make and break point, right? Do I buy a starter? Oh, that exhaust, that thing is totally clogged. So we're, we're not gonna have a muffler right now just because, well, one, I had to take the motivator, but yeah, we've got these off. Let me move some of this stuff so I can kind of stick. Sure, move this. And we are gonna try to set up here and make some sparks. Kind of hard with gloves, but you know, I've already been bitten a whole lot. There we go, come on. Let's get you in there. Let's get somewhere, clip. There's gotta be something in there to connect to. That, maybe? All right, so, this should. Hey, okay. Can we get a couple revolutions before this burns up? Whoa. This might go well. I, I don't know what fuel it has in it, but let's see if it has some fuel. Let's see if it has some coolant and it might start. That was kind of fun. Well, there's a liquid in that radiator. I mean, sure, that'll cool, maybe. Ah, uh, go away, singy bee thing. All right, um, do you guys know where the fuel tank is? Because I think it's under here. Oh, let's, let's see, phone move. Oh, that's a lot of messages. Oh, okay, this, all right, let's review. Park, brake. Does that arrow match? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know, I would, I would think up because it makes it easier to climb out, but you're gonna climb out on that side and that kind of feels like there's more tension and this is letting tent. I don't know. Well, it's in neutral, so we're good there. But if we flip this up, all righty, what do we have here? I haven't even looked. There's hydraulic fluid. 
Is that height? I, there's what tells me what I need to do. Lubricate seat every 250 hours. There's a lot of lubricating. All right, I think. Is that, guys, is that, what does that look like? That was under some pressure. Is that, is that? Oh, ha. So yeah, this is my hydraulic oil, and I'm wondering if we don't need some based on that vacuum sound. See, it's so, makes perfect sense, and then diesel fuel. Um, I smell diesel. I smell it, so let's go for it. Why not? Right? Right? All right, so we have the fuel pump solenoid connected. The way I've got it on, it may pop off on us, which is fine, which is fine. All right. Moments of truth. We've got GoPro there, two angles. Oh my goodness, that was way too easy. Holy. My eyes, it's flinging so much crap everywhere. Okay. Everything's falling off. Why did they park it? I mean, it's running terrible. Absolutely terrible. But that wasn't that much wiring, guys. Well, I say that, I haven't actually fixed a single wire. I just, I bypassed everything. She, she's a little rough. Ah, ow, stop, it hurts. Okay, whatever, ow, acorns are in there, are, ow, that hurt. They're uh, just kind of flying everywhere. Not the smoothest vehicle. I mean, that's a little shaky, but, ah. Okay, that is dangerous standing on that angle. Let's try, let's try over here. Come on, you can smooth it out. I believe in you, truck. You've only got really old diesel in you. Also, I forgot, it's a 4BT. Those things, that's normal idle. They idle terrible. Let's let it warm up a little bit and then tr check hydraulic fluids because I don't mind the woods, but I'd rather work up at the shop and we can try driving it. Engine had oil, engine has coolant. There's enough fuel. Hey, hydraulics work. Gas pedal works. Full disclosure, I've, literally, I've never driven one of these. Now, I have driven a smaller tractor with a cutting brake, so that's left wheel, right wheel. Uh, the confusing parking brake. Off. Okay. Let's just try it first. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a problem. Okay. Works. I heard a noise. Seat is sliding. All right. I wonder if 
I just tilt it to get the water out? Is that this one? No. Oh, okay. There we go. For the first drive getting it uh up to the shop the engine works pretty good we have got all of the tractors wiring to still kind of sort out um the seat stuck facing backwards parking brake appears to work uh these rams well that one leaks a little bit um but yeah that seal it just isn't there that's not good and uh yeah this one does the same thing and well hey you know when three of or one of the three isn't leaking we'll call that a, a win so i actually need to talk with the owner of the tractor and see what he thinks because yeah we're gonna at least have to put seals on this thing which i'm not 100% on the support. I think you basically just lay this thing out and have all the weight down and we'll be safe to It's easier you disconnect here and here and you have these two massive pins and a crane and you can take that cylinder out and that cylinder out but for right now I might just focus on trying to get our wiring to work Okay, so we've got that shroud off and sitting down there so we can get a little bit better look at our wiring and one of the things again that we could kind of see 
or the absolute melted fuses here. Um, something absolutely overloaded, fuse didn't burn, and they've kind of did this little bypass setup, but I don't think we have to keep it that way. We're gonna just kind of work our way through and find where all of our faults lie. And uh, well, I don't have a wiring diagram, so we're just kind of gonna do the slow process. We've got our gauge panel actually just unplugged for right now, and the reason for that is, we flip her over on the back of this. This is really common. You see it in 80s, 90s, 70s cars are these kind of plastic printed circuits. And we've got a couple of them just completely off and shorted. So I'm going to check and see if I can get just that backing plate, how much that is. Or we'll just glue that down and clean those contacts up and uh, work on getting the gauges working. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff. This looks like Definitely has been added at some point aftermarket. That looks like a kill switch, which it probably is because some of that wires over here with that aftermarket wiring, that does not look like case at all. Um, just again, that, that, that doesn't match what I think it should be. It's maybe, you coming guys will know absolutely real quick. I think maybe a low pressure safety switch. I don't know. This is our power out. That also was a power out. Again, it's just uh, poke around and see what we come up with. I'm gonna pick you guys up kind of in between, show you some of the stuff I'm doing. Wiring takes a lot. It's not exciting to watch, but it's very exciting to learn about. So I'm gonna tell you about the things that I am doing. So that way, when you start working on some diagnosis, you can kind of figure out the steps that you need to do, especially if you don't have a wiring diagram, because we know all that engine needs is power at the fuel solenoid. We've proven that. We started it, we drove it, but we want to get the rest of that tractor working. So we're going to have some spaghetti. All right, let's get you guys caught up. Uh, I still need to rebuild our fuse box because that's not the concern just yet. We want to kind of work through and see what we've got going on with our custom wiring. Now with these key switches here, they're fairly universal, very similar to even what's in Johnny, is you have the power in, you have your crank signal out the top, I think there's sometimes a ground built in, and then these should basically have power and accessory, and they don't. Um, the other thing that I'm able to do is turn the key on and like shake it, and as it's shaking, I can hear relays turning on and off. And something else that I kind of was able to uh, sort out and what this wiring is doing and it's actually bypassed right now is power would come in on this side would normally go on the, that side out and the reason they'd have you push that is let's come around here see old tractors you've got to figure out all the old field repairs and that is i'm fairly certain an oil pressure switch or some type of safety but what you're doing by bypassing or pushing that button is you send power to the same lug as your fuel solenoid and it kicks it on before pressure, like it gives it power while the oil pressure builds up or temperature, whatever safety switch that is, it bypasses it temporarily to go ahead and let you start the tractor. At least that's what I think it is. So we are going to uh, proceed with getting a new key switch and uh, then wire a few things up. Because the other thing I did notice when we turn it to crank, we've got a starter solenoid clicking, which means we should have power at that one lone wire. I'm by myself. I'm not, you know, arms aren't that long. So we're going to run for a part. We're still waiting for seals to rebuild hydraulics, change out this key switch, and let's see what happens. Hey, we got an update before we bought parts. I can wiggle this thing enough to kind of make it work. And again, we were finding we weren't getting our key switch to make it all the way through, but I checked everything on the neutral switch, that real ugly wiring. And despite being ugly, it was good. So I decided to check the secondary starter relay. And hey, look, it works. But the problem is we've got a couple bad relays and if I wiggle this just right, it starts to shut off because again, we've got a bad key switch. So key switch, wire in new fuse boxes so those look a little bit better and four new relays. And uh, we can start putting our electrical system back together. Then we just need seals because those things still puke.
All right, the sun's starting to go down, but we have got our fuse panel kind of replace these nice little units uh, with the easy to kind of jump and bus everything. So we are back normal. There were those two kind of shorted circuits that I just left the fuses out. There was one that was in and it was getting real hot. Tractor obviously seems to be working without it. So we're going to work on that a little bit more kind of once we get our gauge panel in, which means we are ready to do that. One thing I did inside is I got some brush glue and uh, let's flip this over. We were able to get those contacts to sit down pretty stinking well. So we are going to start putting that whole control panel back in so I can try to figure out where the heck the key is supposed to mount and uh, get that cylinder mounted in, get our panel mounted in and just keep on uh, making this an electrically working vehicle we're still waiting on our seals same day it's not like uh, they showed up that quick Alrighty, we've got a little more progress done everything is very dirty uh, i managed to get the seat forward i don't know what i did especially considering i'm about to have to flip it around because we're going to go ahead and move it closer to the shop we still need to get those seals in you know the mythical seals i've said about 14 times already but because this thing is so filthy why not get it closer to the shop where we can pressure wash it and i'll also have the gantry crane to kind of help support that arm while we are pulling the hydraulics out of it but something we can now do also, you probably shouldn't operate, like actual operate, operate a uh, tractor without all its safety panels in place. But we are just, uh, or trash everywhere. We're just trying to move it. So one thing I did that I may undo is I hooked up with a safety buzzer. And that thing is pretty stinking annoying. But what's exciting, that turns on. We either don't have fuel, but, oh, come on, really? Oh, wait. Am I not neutral? There we go. Come on. There we go. So it turns out it doesn't look like our tack works. You know, you don't need that on a diesel. Oh, well, pretty much nothing works. But we'll bring up. All right, how does this work again? Here, let's give it some RPM. There we go. This thing is uh, butter smooth, let me tell you. just lots of oil coming out of this thing so we'll get it up to where oh that's a squirter too nice hmm. what about this one hey we got one that's not leaking all right so now we'll go and idle her back down Yeah, this is why you don't want to go without safeties, but we got those up. I'm just going to drive it up so that way I can kind of focus on what I got to do and get it parked and ready for some cleaning. All right, it is a beautiful sunny morning. I'm blinded on the right side just a little bit, but we've got some oil seals. So hopefully here with our Bulldog seals made in the USA, USA there. Uh, us made oil seals we're going to be able to get these cylinders to stop just absolutely exploding and vomiting gear oil everywhere it's not started in a couple days and they're still dripping so i've been trying to keep and gather as many of the drips as possible to be responsible so i am going to uh, go ahead and do these one at a time there is a way to kind of support this arm and take all of the weight off of it with the hinge pinch hinge 
pins to where you're able to just pull all the ramps. The thing is, when you're kind of working on something like this, this is an astronomically heavy piece of uh, ductile iron. Does that mean it quacks? Not sure. But um, it's extremely heavy and the hydraulic cylinders basically are keeping them from collapsing. So the moment we start disconnecting the lines and pulling those pins to take the rams apart, it's gonna try to fall and crush us. So by doing one at a time, I'm gonna be able to roll over our crane and kind of secure this section and support it while we pull and do the one cylinder. We'll get it reconnected and bleed it out and then we can move on and support that part of the arm and get that cylinder pulled out of it. Just trying to make it as safe as possible because this is very heavy stuff and uh, apt to kind of, you know, break limbs or murder you uh, if you're not careful. And I'll tell you what, I didn't wake up today wanting to be murdered. So uh, let's get a camera set up. We'll get some supports going and uh, give it a try. I've never re... Well, a master cylinder is a hydraulic cylinder, right? So I've, I've rebuilt a hydraulic cylinder on a much, much smaller scale, right? That's just a giant master cylinder. That's, that's what we're going with. All right, if I'm out of breath, well, that's because I just hoisted that thing out by hand. Um, it's not light. It's uh, it's about three hernias heavy. Uh, I also discovered as we went over, a lot of the oil that is in it uh, is in fact water. The angle it was sitting at with a completely wiped set of seals let a lot of water in, which now tells me we're gonna have to drain all of the hydraulic oil out of this machine just to make sure there's no more water that can potentially damage something. Whew, very expensive, but um, I learned something. When uh, you mention to someone who's been working with heavy equipment their entire life that you plan to try to rebuild a backhoe cylinder, boom cylinder on the tractor, and a dig cylinder on the tractor, and the response is, ooh, that's not, you know, amazement, woo. That's, um, well in the South, there's also another phrase that's, uh, oh, bless your heart. Um, that's a polite way of saying you're an idiot. So, um, we're, uh, we're gonna make the smart choice. There's no point in hurting myself when I can take them to a place that has cranes and, and the equipment to do it right. So, this is one where I'm not an expert, so I couldn't really teach you much about rebuilding hydraulic seals and wiper seals and all of that stuff, but, um, we got to do it right. We don't want to do dumb things. So let's get the other cylinder pulled. I got to figure out how to kind of shore up the machine and in the configuration I got it. And uh, man, I, I hate not, I hate saying I can't, but I also realize that I'm old enough that if we do pop that fourth vertebra and get that fourth hernia that, you know, we're KO'd for months. So uh, we got, Gotta do the right thing, the smart thing.
Well, while we were getting those cylinders rebuilt, oh man, I got dirt all over my face. I decided to go ahead and get this tractor clean, get all of that grime knocked off of it. And for only a pressure washer, I'd pulled the gas one out because I don't think the electric one would have had the oomph. The amount of junk we've got knocked off of this thing. I don't know if you remember, this was black and just full. And look, we can actually see metal throughout just about everywhere. Down there was just tremendous amounts of mud, clay, um, based on some of the smells, maybe some poo. But I mean, it ain't perfect. But there's not moss growing on that panel or on these fenders anymore. Two hours of pressure washing, three tanks of gas in the pressure washer. I'm kind of beat a little bit. I'm, I'm excited and encouraged by how good this thing looks. Um, I hope you think it looks good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it. Again, all of the complete filth is very minimal. The only problem we were running into is where we had petrified grease. Um, normally at some point you want to clean the old grease that starts coming out when you're servicing the machine. If you just keep adding it, eventually it petrifies and becomes a nightmare to clean. But um, we also got this engine looking really good. One handed, come on, we can do it. Oh, there we go. Look, you can see yellow. I'm just really amped on it even more. Not only does it run, and not only do most all the hydraulics work, the two worst leakers are getting fixed. We can pick those things up, two pins, four hydraulic lines, we're digging holes because that's that's what we do with the tractor. So, golly, it's mud's falling off. I mean, look at look at look at that mud mud speckles. Um, we've almost got this thing back to life, which is really really cool. So, we're gonna jump ahead a couple days where I'm going to go ahead and grease all of the grease fittings I can find, and then we are going to have our hydraulic cylinders back. So, uh, time warp now insert amazing transition Dwayne please I went ahead and we have got our rear cylinders back on the tractor and they're not leaking fluid everywhere which is kind of encouraging which means we have the tiniest weep there and that thing squirts going up and down but little things we can use it like that um, but speaking of using there's something that needs to happen before, you know, daily use of one of these tractors, let alone it sitting for a decade. I think there's 1,597 of those little grease fittings everywhere on this tractor, everywhere. And every last one of them needs grease, needs fresh grease. So I was at the store you know what they sell at the store? Electric greasing guns. And you know what I didn't buy because I figured it wouldn't be that bad until I looked at the map and saw there's 14,380 of those things. <sighs> yeah, so we're gonna get some gloves on, get some Valvoline cobalt grease, and start squeezing. It's already kind of warm, but once we're done doing that, we can actually, we can dig something. We can, uh, well actually I've decided a project. Um, my driveway has got some low spots that get muddy up here and there's a bunch of asphalt millings that we can go scoop up with and uh, I can fix my driveway. And in case you are thinking I'm exaggerating with my 18,572 grease points, maybe a little. It only shows 36, but I think it's a liar. It's a dirty, oh no, wait, there's 13 more. Oh goodness.
Oh, hey, let's take a win. If we look around, I mean, I, I kind of fixed my parking lot. Uh, I have honestly never used a piece of equipment like this. And the good news is every cylinder we've replaced or repaired is currently not leaking. And we're gonna just kind of dig a little bit of hole with that. If you notice, we kind of got her in backhoe position, wheels off the ground, ready to do some digging, but she's a little tilty and uh, Talking with the landlord, where the guy who owns this, he remembers this one was rebuilt, but the shaft is bent, so it just leaks. So we're not able to get her all the way off the ground, which means we'll have that stabilizer down because it just leaks as soon as you put pressure on it. But, but we just ran it for 45-ish minutes. Now I know all of you operators are gonna tell me everything I did wrong, and that's fair. I've never done anything like this before, but I'm, I'm happy with it. It is much leveler. It will hopefully drain better and I'm not gonna have mud pits everywhere while I'm pushing cars around. Um, but yeah, let's wrap this, uh, wrap this thing up because there's one thing left for it to do and that's dig a little bit of hole with that part of it. We'll just, I'm gonna dig in my driveway that I just fixed and then fill it back up because I don't have anywhere else to diggy diggy hole. That was probably the worst operator ever. I'm figuring out the levers, but there's a hole. I'm, I'm calling that a win. Um, this is very hard ground, and I was learning the trick of how big a bite and small a bite and how to swing the arms and the levers to do the things, and yeah, it works. See, look, it's ugh, a pretty decent step in, right? So uh, now I need to put all that dirt back in. We took something that was uh, forgotten about and just kind of rotting in the woods and got it working again. And not just working, but working pretty well. Obviously there's still, you know, a couple small hydraulic things, but it does what it's supposed to do. Digs holes, I can level driveways with it. It's uh, gonna pick stuff up and uh, it works. And I can turn the key, there's no weird wiring. I'm, I'm excited. So uh, wind's picking up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill my hole back in and uh, then we're gonna wrap up. Well, you know how I said I was gonna fill in my hole? It's not fully filled in and there's a good reason for it. Um, it's something you guys need to be prepared for when you get a piece of construction equipment that's been sitting for over a decade. Um, uh, there, that's, uh, that's more hydraulic oil. Uh, it's not from any of the rear cylinders. They're working great. Um, and I gotta order some more parts, but but we won. Th this is a win, it is running. The gauges are starting to work just by running. It wants to live, but it, it needs one major cylinder repair. So this is the one that potentially has a bent shaft. I'm not super worried about that because I can still use this thing 
Um, except for this. Um, no, I did not uh, wax anything here. Um, yeah, the, the front loader lift cylinder, it, she exploded it. <laughs> that's, that's leaking very badly. So I'm now at the point where she gets to sit until I get that seal kit in. So do we order all four for the front? Just rebuild all four. But then we also have the steering cylinders. They don't appear to be leaking, but they might eventually. So that's the realistic thing when it comes to reviving stuff. You can get stuff working and you're going to have new problems pop up. Eventually, we're going to get them all fixed, though. Um, but that's, that is going to be it for this episode. Our goal was to start it. It starts with the key. The gauges work. We fixed the driveway. We ruined the driveway. And we dug, dug a hole with the... The backhoe so we're, we're, we're winning i'm happy i'm excited hopefully you guys learned a little bit um maybe maybe not to go into old construction equipment revival without uh, everything you need to rebuild the uh, hydraulic cylinders on hand because i'm gonna have to drain the hydraulic oil again to minimize the drip that's life but what's life without questionable choices right and speaking of that i want to thank you guys as always for hanging out I'm Jared, reminding you to always make questionable choices. And if you find an old case tractor in the woods, get it out. It, it, it's it's going to work. It's just going to take a lot of work. We'll see you. <laughs>